The Motivational Interviewing What's All the Buzz About webinar is presented by MI Training Today, your source for the highest quality motivational interviewing, training, consultation, and coaching services. We provide in-house agency-specific trainings and consultation, community trainings like the Motivational Interviewing Two-Day Intensive with training centers in San Diego, California, and Nashville, Tennessee. We also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching services and webinars, including customized webinars designed for your organization. Katie Slack is the owner and lead trainer of MI Training Today. She has over 13 years of experience in the social services field and holds a BA in psychology and a master's of social work degree. She is a member of the Motivational Interviewing Network of Trainers. Katie's counseling career has focused on providing therapy for survivors of intimate partner violence. In addition, she has experience working with adolescents aging out of foster care, persistently mentally ill adults, and adults and adolescents struggling with alcohol and drug misuse. Katie was part of the teams of three projects focused specifically on evaluating the use of motivational interviewing with different populations. The California Espert Project, providing brief alcohol and drug treatment for adults. The USC TND Project, providing drug and alcohol prevention, early intervention services for adolescents. And she's currently involved in a pilot project at Rady Children's Hospital, providing therapy to survivors of intimate partner violence who have an open child welfare services case. Katie is passionate about teaching people to use motivational interviewing and has trained thousands of therapists, case managers, social workers, healthcare workers, and advocates to use MI with their clients. I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Katie. Great. Thank you again for joining us for the Motivational Interviewing What's All the Buzz About webinar. We titled the course the way that we did because you may have been hearing people talk about MI. You may have heard about different projects involving motivational interviewing in your community. One nationwide project that has been happening over the past few years is the Espert Project. This was a project in which millions of dollars in grant money were awarded by SAMHSA to half a dozen or a dozen states. And as part of this project, people had to design a brief intervention using motivational interviewing to assess alcohol and drug use in a hospital setting. Another large project that you may be familiar with is here in California, the Department of Juvenile Justice actually trained everyone within their system and even enacted a train the trainer program of, as part of the project where they left trainers in-house to support the staff using MI. Um, and finally, another cutting-edge development in North Carolina, um, they actually established a, man, a, a mandated requirement for all intensive home therapists to receive an introductory level training in motivational interviewing. So MI is growing pretty rapidly, and you may be hearing more and more about it, and that may be why you have joined us to hear more about what motivational interviewing is and if it would be a fit for you. And in terms of what I'll be covering in the webinar, first of all, you can expect to have an introduction to motivational interviewing. So I will talk about what it is and where it originated. I'll also talk to you about how MI can potentially increase your client's success. We'll look at populations that it's been shown to be helpful for, and also a recent meta-analysis that was done on the past 25 years of research. And finally, we'll look at, is motivational interviewing right for you? Is it a good fit for you or your agency? And if it is, we'll talk about what to look for in a training. Also, throughout the presentation, I'll use the word client and patient interchangeably um, so that you know, I know based on your setting depends on how you refer to the person that you're working with. So what is motivational interviewing? It's a therapeutic approach. You could also think of it as a communication style. And these are the different elements of the definition. It's client-centered, which comes from Carl Rogers' work, 
So we begin where the client is. As opposed to other client-centered therapies, though, motivational interviewing is, in fact, directive. So we are guiding the session, and um, we, are in, we are guiding the particular direction and focusing in, in the conversation on behavior change in particular. And we are looking to explore and hopefully resolve any ambivalence that the person has regarding the behavior change that they're trying to make. And finally, we always maintain a focus on respecting the person's autonomy. Motivational interviewing was developed in the early 80s by Dr. Bill Miller. He was treating problem drinkers at the time. He later on joined forces with Stephen Rolnick, another psychologist. And in 1991, they wrote Preparing People for Change. Um, the second edition is out now. And then I've also listed for you here um, the different therapies and concepts that motivational interviewing really grew out of, in case you're interested in reading uh, more on each one and how it influenced motivational interviewing. Motivational interviewing is an evidence-based practice. So there are over 300 studies that have shown its effectiveness. Uh, like I said, it did begin in the alcohol and drug treatment world. It has since spread into a number of other areas. So it's um, been used to work in, with the treatment of gambling, medication compliance, diet and exercise, co-occurring disorders, eating disorders, uh, also clients who have been mandated to treatment. Um, there is a great deal of research on using MI with adolescents. And then finally, the latest area that motivational interviewing has moved into is the use of MI with intimate partner violence survivors. I actually did my thesis on the use of MI with IPV survivors. And at the time that I did my thesis, there were no published studies. Uh, now I know of one, and it's an area that, there, that continues to grow. Um, and there's also kind of a grassroots movement for people who work in that field, advocates or counselors who have been trained, and really connect to it and want more of it. So it's really spreading in that field, and I think it will continue to grow. I want to share with you here a meta-analysis that looked at the past 25 years of research. I think it's a great, wonderful resource. So over 1,000 articles were screened, and 119 were selected to be analyzed. And here's what they found. So the majority of people, 75%, saw some improvement from treatment they received that included motivational interviewing. And the bottom line is when they compared MI to other active treatment models, like cognitive behavioral therapy, they found equal effects, but motivational interviewing took much less time, so over 100 fewer minutes of treatment. This could be, you know, could offer a great cost benefit for programs. We also see that MI can have a, a tremendous impact on engaging people in treatment, and also on impacting their intention to change. So in a nutshell, what we know is that it is a wonderful way to engage people, to keep people coming back, and to help them follow through on making healthy behavior changes in their lives. And ultimately, if you are looking at a program where um, reducing the amount of time that someone needs to be in treatment and still um, reaching the same results, then motivational interviewing really could be the answer. In helping you look at is motivational interviewing right for you or is it right for your organization, there's a few things I want to put out there for you to consider that will hopefully help you make your decision. So the first one being theoretical issues. We're going to look at the spirit, which is really the foundation of motivational interviewing, and also the techniques. Those go hand in hand, and we'll talk more about them in a minute. 
and then also some practical concerns for you. Things that come up when we, when we consider, can I get this training? Will it be worth it to me? Um, do I have the time? And, and am I willing to give the effort that it would take? So we'll talk about when and where am I can be used, who can be trained in motivational interviewing, and then just a few other things for you to consider as well as you're trying to make that decision. And as we're talking about these things, I'd like you to think about when you're considering whether or not to adopt MI into your practice, which one is more important to you, the theoretical side of the issue or the practical concerns. So as I mentioned, there are two components to motivational interviewing, the spirit and the techniques. They really go hand in hand and one cannot be effective without the other. The spirit, as I mentioned, is the foundation and it really is the guiding philosophy of the approach. And there are three key components. They're listed here. Autonomy versus authority, collaboration versus a more confrontive approach, and evocation versus lecturing or educating, being in that kind of position with someone. So we'll talk about each one. In terms of autonomy, motivational interviewing assumes that each patient is really entitled to be treated with respect because of their essential worth as a human being. In other words, we always maintain a focus on the client's ability to choose and we maintain the idea that the client is the expert on their life, not us. Um, they really maintain the freedom to choose whether or not they will change. For collaboration versus a more confrontive approach, uh, what we know from over 70 studies on aggressive confrontation is that that approach can actually push someone back in the change process and you know, really achieve the opposite effect of what we're looking for. So from a motivational interviewing standpoint, we view the working relationship as a partnership. For evocation versus educating someone or lecturing to someone, motivational interviewing really seeks to evoke or elicit the wisdom from within the person. There's a great quote by Bill Miller that says, trust in the wisdom of the person. So as the image here shows, we are, we're always looking for that pearl of wisdom. And it's really assumed that each person, um, even if they're in the midst of crisis or they have something they're really struggling with, we believe they have a lot of their own answers. And it's our job in that collaborative partnership to, to evoke those ideas, those solutions, um, their desire, and their inherent motivation for change. This is a great quote about the power of someone hearing them say, say for themselves what matters to them and what they want and why they want it versus us telling them what to do, that it's much more powerful and really can have an impact. So now that we've talked about each element of the spirit, think about for yourself, you know, I'm just wondering, for you, which one really appeals to you the most? Autonomy, collaboration, or evocation? Or maybe all three appeal to you.